Good afternoon. Today is April 26, 2020, and it's about 3 p.m. Uh, here in Pasadena, California. And here is the very uh, eventful update since uh, last Sunday. I'd like to mention that on the business cards, if you remember, I showed you the back of the Crystal World Holdings business card. There's also another saying on there that uh, may not have been clear, and that was art architects of the new sports economy. So that's actually a phrase that uh, we came up with about a decade ago. Just want to make mention of that. Um, you're going to start hearing this in the news pretty soon. New World Order. Okay. Look on the back of a dollar bill, Novus Ordo Seclorum. You're going to start to hear that a bit more. I'm not going to get into that here. I just want to mention it now on the record um, that you will be seeing that pretty soon. We're getting uh, daily, multiple daily requests to fund the pilot accounts, including some of them f overflowing into the forums. Uh, we made the decision not to allow uh, new funds in at this time, and that's going to remain the, the, the policy. So n uh, no funding, direct funding of pilot accounts, that's going to be the standing policy. Lots of gambling puff pieces. Uh, coming out, understandably, because the industry is suffering mightily under the weight of coronavirus and the lack of games being played. Obviously, that's going to hurt your business if you're in the business of betting on sports games. Um, there's no money in people's pockets for this. I know some of these pieces are uh, coming out. Uh, there's no money for this. People are going to food banks to get their food. Um, the idea that they're going to spend their money on, on gambling is ridiculous. First of all, there is no sports gambling available. The only thing that's left is online casino games, which has been there for a while. Um, you're seeing a bit of migration to that, but that's a short burst. Uh, you'll see that that's not going to sustain. There's still an awful lot of... Um, wishful thinking out there in terms of the length of how long this situation is going to go on and as it drags on the financial ability to uh, deal in any way or play with gambling just isn't going to be there. You're going to have to pay your rent. You're going to have to feed your family. So um, all they're going to be left with are basically the addicts and the idiots who are going to lose all their money and end up on the street and then you've eaten all your customers. So I don't see it. Uh, zero political will for this, in spite of the puff pieces trying to convince people that uh, gambling is some sort of a solution for the financial problems. There's no political will. In fact, bills are already uh, dying in committee and on, on the state house desks. Uh, Missouri is an example of that recently. Don't compare this to the Great Depression when people flock to casinos and to speakeasies and that kind of thing. It's not the same. That was a social function. At this point, with coronavirus, that part is gone. So the, the social side of it is gone. So you're basically just left with online casino games in your room. Uh, that's not going to appeal to the vast majority of people. They're, they're, having, you know, they're stir crazy. They're wanting to get outside and, and, and socialize and, and that sort of thing. So. Um, those comparisons to the Great Depression and why it's going to send this, the political will and people's desire to gamble up, it's just simply, it's not, it's, an, it's a false equivalency. That's not what's happening here. Um, no mobile means nothing. So if there's no mobile, uh, and this is even more the case now, people are not going to travel to a casino for a variety of reasons. First of all, they're not going to find one open. Uh, they're not going to do that to set up an account so they can gamble on non-existent sports games. So if there's no mobile in your in your bill or in your online in your gambling setup, there's it just it's as good as having nothing these days. Just look at the pervasiveness of mobile in every other aspect of 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 the society. It's no different here. So if you require somebody to sign up in person, especially now with the fact you can't do that can't even do that. Um, not happening. Um, Job of the Hut, Sheldon Adelson, Sands Corporation, says he hasn't seen uh, anything like this in his 70 years of business. 
Um, the numbers are down 50% in the near term and projected out 80%. Um, yeah, that speaks for itself. Don't believe me, look it up yourself. Tribal approvals do not count. Uh, I saw some flagging of those stories as if that was some great victory. That was a known element. In fact, those, those things were already headed that direction before all of this. Still, it comes down to a physical casino. So being able to go to an Indian casino and now bet on sports games in some places, that's not a victory. That's not a victory. Uh, Bill's failing out. Missouri is an example. The tax reporting coming out of the places that have been legalized over the last 12 to 18 months, the numbers are far below the projections, as they always are, but they're even farther below the projections now than they would have been uh, if it wasn't for the, the coronavirus. So when new states start to look at the, the pushing of bills, which again is politically untenable right now, they're going to look at the recent examples and see that those numbers do not add up. And in fact, they did not get anything close to what they were supposed to get. They never do, but it's exaggerated right now. Uh, sports books are going out of business left and right. That's even coming out of Legal Sports Report, which is the principal mouthpiece of the gambling faction, it appears. Um, they can't hide it. It's happening uh, for obvious reasons. There are no sports games. They had weak cash positions to start with. So you're going to see a lot of attrition there, and they're trying to spin that story toward consolidation. Okay, fine, maybe that's true. But when your industry, it's like saying, well, in the airlines, well, 80% of our, uh, our competitors are going to die, so there's only going to be a couple left. That could be true. That's not in the public interest. And you could, you're probably going to end up with challenges from the FTC over monopolies and that sort of thing. So... Nice try, but still not a positive piece of news. Then there's the case of several of these uh, organs for the gambling faction spinning the story that somehow uh, they're going to help with COVID-19 and, and abatement of property taxes, trying to say if you bring in gambling, um, this is going to help in the present crisis. That is about the most sinister thing I've heard yet. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to take their last dollar and then throw them onto the street with the germs. So that's, that's good stuff. Pure evil, and it's a lie. Ball Street was mentioned by Legal Sports Report. I know that I'm being watched and we're being watched. So let me just put this very, very clearly. Watch yourself. We have this technology tied up really tight in terms of a sports market. And the fact that you're even sniffing around tells me that you know that there's a problem in your space, meaning the gambling space. Don't cross over into the line. Don't cross the line into our space. We will come after you and we will destroy you. We've been working on this for nearly 20 years and you will not steal one single element from this, not one. And we've contacted you before, so you're on warning. Social distancing in a casino, that's not going to work for a lot of reasons. That's not why people go to casinos. They don't go to casinos to be separated by six feet. I want you to try to imagine a casino. I assume most people have been in one or at least seen one with players around a craps table separated six feet apart every other slot machine, really. So not only is that not going to work from a social perspective, it's not going to work from an economics perspective. It, the math isn't going to work. You've lost at least half your real estate. So, and they, they, prof, they, they determine profitability per square foot. So there's all kinds of problems with this. Um, never mind the fact that getting on an airplane and flying to Las Vegas is going to become very expensive pretty soon flying anywhere because the airlines can't fly airplanes around with half the seats empty for the same reason that casinos can't uh, have half the, the, the floor space being used. So the prices are going to be driven up in terms of the, the rates for flights 
And the cost structures of all these businesses are essentially going to double, if not more. That's why the recovery, you know, a point here, human behavior in these kinds of circumstances changes very quickly. People are realizing by necessity the things that they don't need, they really thought they did need, that they don't need, things that they thought that they had to have even in entertainment that they don't have to have. And when they make those changes, they tend to stick. So when people get used to not gambling or not gambling on sports and not going to Las Vegas and not going to casinos, it's going to be much more difficult to get them back in there. And especially with the stranger danger thing that we have here, uh, the stranger danger is going to persist long after this, uh, you know, whenever the end is declared, who knows of this, it's going to persist much uh, longer than that. So when somebody makes um, plans for a trip, they're going to qualify all kinds of things. Do I want to get on an airplane? You know, is it worth it? Do I have the money for that? Again, it, the prices are going to go up. They have to. Um, do I want to go to Las Vegas? Sin City, okay? Where, I mean, it's in your face, okay? Do I want to risk going over there and maybe getting reinfected? You have stories now where they're even saying they're not sure if you have the antibodies even if you have the antibodies, you might be able to catch it again. So that stuff is not going to just disappear out of people's minds, even when the all clear, if the all clear comes anytime soon, is given. It's just not going to happen. It's it, it, These kinds of things shock the public so intensely that they're going to reassess all of their behaviors and costs. That's what's going to happen. And that's why I believe the recovery for, for that industry, which was already, I mean, it's a vice. It, it's in your face. They tell you it's a vice. So I, I think people will reassess their behaviors and think, Am I, should I really be doing this? Isn't there something else I could be doing with my, my time, talents, treasure? I mean, it, it, I, that's, that's going to happen to a large part of the population by necessity, and then those habits will stick after, after the crisis has abated, whenever that is. Um, in a desperate attempt, uh, they tried to list election markets, put that up, pulled it down. You can't have that. Can induce assassinations. There's all kinds of. There's too much to discuss here, but you don't bet on elections. Okay, <laughs> that's against the rules. It's against the law. Apparently, the legal team and these wise ass uh, sports book operators didn't know that. They were alerted to it very quickly because it came down. Now let's talk about the DraftKings IPO. Okay, first of all, that's not what happened. What they have is a blank check company. That blank check company what raised four hundred million dollars, four or five hundred million last year, about a year ago, and is sitting in the bank. Okay, so what happened here is they took that blank check company over, and they they filled their treasury. That's because if you read the stories, they're down to the last hundred million dollars. That may sound like a lot of money, but I guarantee you for the, that operation, it's not. That's not very much. And they're burning through it pretty fast. So this was to get the treasury filled and, and, and you're going to see this, look at the insider transactions when they start to print, that it's cashing out of the insiders. They're taking the money out. They don't have a business model, okay? They're in the business of sports gambling and daily fantasy, and there is no such thing, okay? That's, so where does the money come from? Where does the profit come from? Where is the income? Where is it even going to start? I mean, even if you call it football if in, in the fall, six months, a long time, five or six months, a long time to carry no income on your books. So this is nothing more than a, uh, a desperation attempt to get some cash in the bank and not fall to pieces like the rest of the market. No gains, no revenue. Oh, and another lie. It did not open an up on the first day. Look at the chart. They used the print from the previous last trade before they took the blank check company over. They used that price as their starting price. That's not the case. The opening price and the closing price are very clear on the chart. Look at their chart. It closed below the open. Okay? That's not a successful IPO, okay? That's a failure. 
pure desperation. And then you have the matter of now they are a now they are a public company which is engaged in illegal sports gambling. The Wire Act, the Wire Act is still in place. PASPA is not an enabling legislation. PASPA only defers the decision to the states. Okay? The Federal Wire Act is still in place. That is prohibition. That is an anti-corruption statute from the Kennedy administration. It is still there. So now you have a public company trading in the United States that is breaking federal law. Now, SEC, do your damn job. Okay? You want somebody to mess with, rather than us or anybody like us who's trying to fix the masses that you guys keep creating, why don't you go after those guys who are flat, black letter, breaking the law? They are now operating a public company which has no federal legal basis. In fact, it's black letter illegal. So, incredible. Um, Almost all of the news comment stories on DraftKings are negative. Look for yourself in the comments. They're negative. Negative, 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 negative. So we'll see where the trading goes over the coming days and weeks. Um, it's going to be very interesting. I don't think the insiders are done selling out yet. So it's going to be very telling. I think tomorrow's action, will, tomorrow and Tuesday will tell you. But um, that's what's happening. And, and, and just taking on that $400 million so they don't run out of cash before the sports, sports start back up again or when they think it's going to start. That's exactly what's going on. And you're going to see, come back to this video and see that was the case. Negative oil prices. So this is probably the most uh, incredible event I've seen in, in my lifetime, frankly, especially since the entire world economy unfortunately, is driven by extractive petroleum industry. I mean, even beneath the currency is, is oil. Many years ago, Alper and I talked about what did uh, I think and he think the world ran on. He said money. I said, no, it's deeper than that. It runs on oil. Um, that That's being turned upside down. I mean, you had a negative, about negative $40 barrel contract. And you're going to see... Um, there, there's, and I think it's credible. It's, it's quite possible you're going to see negative $100 contracts in May because there's just the, the system is busting at the seams. And again, uh, this is a case of, of a paradigm shift. People are reassessing, well, do I need that car? Do I need to, you know, do I, I mean, do I want a car paint? Do I want to pay 3 or $4 or even $2 a gallon for gas? Are there other options? These kinds of things, this kind of an event makes people sit back and reassess things and change their behavior. And those behaviors, again, stick. They tend to stick when there's no compelling reason to go back. If you get used to not paying a $500 car payment, you're not going to go back to it. It, it. it doesn't mean it's one less thing you have to deal with in your life. It's time you get back for your family, for your friends, resources you don't have to put out. So sports is the new oil. Um, we said that, I don't know exactly, it's been about 10 years, maybe a little bit longer, um, that, that that framing was made. So I produced the first in a series of videos today. It's not the last one. It's the introduction, basically, um, you know, kind of, I don't know, my attempt at trying to demonstrate the storyline. This is not the whole storyline, but um, you're going to see that. Uh, video link is, is in this uh, is in this message in this update if you want to look at that video we're going to be looking at um, this is just recommendations I received from stakeholders look at lacrosse WNBA that that's been on our radar for a while we actually have some contacts from LinkedIn in there and then minor leagues I also have a number of minor league uh, team contacts in the LinkedIn farm uh, ASM's worst trading day is better than Fantex's best trading week. If you don't know what Fantex is, Fantex is the last attempted knockoff of all sports market or the concept of sports as an asset class or sports stock market uh, came about, I believe, about uh, about 10 years ago. Um, didn't last too terribly long, burned about $100 million um, and, and deep six. 
um, our worst trading day on the test market is better than the best week they ever had. So that's the most recent example of a failed attempt at knocking us off. Open rates on the ASM emails that I send out now greater than 70%. That's way higher than I've ever seen it. So um, definitely everybody's paying more attention now than they have been before. Zach's Star Wars and Sports Vote videos um, are aging very well. If you want to look at those, they're on the sportsvote.com. That'll land you on the YouTube page and just go back to the first couple videos if you're not familiar with that. So they're aging very well. Um, looks like we looked into the future. I didn't have any doubt that we were. So take a look. Oktoberfest canceled. That's really an, a, a far bigger signal than it may appear to be. Um, the uh, Yeah, it, I mean, <laughs> that's a really big signal. For the Germans to give up their beer fest in October, which is what... Uh, five months from now, six months from now, um, that means there's no hope in their view that things are going to be resolved for that. So take that as a signal, a very valid signal. Uh, there's a lot, not only is there commercial interest in that, but there's national pride and all the rest of that. So big deal. So the final name of the Sports Vote Manifesto um, publication date July 4, 2020, is the Sports Vote Manifesto, a Green New Deal. Again, the Sports Vote Manifesto, a Green New Deal. Okay, so here's another one. Remember this. This is New York Times from uh, March 27, you know, two years and uh, about a month, right? So this is the, uh, the open letter. Some of you, uh, actually, this is one of the two copies that we owe for the... Um, the people who drew uh, one of the drawings we had, so take a look at that. Also aging very well, New York Times. This was the New York Times uh, Washington, D.C. market for um, the, the New York Times in Washington, D.C. on uh, March 27th, 2018. We received notice from the Los Angeles uh, Superior Court that the hearing on the motion to vacate Leon's corrupt default judgment 10 years ago was pushed to October 14th, uh, 2020. It will, that's as far out on the calendar as they can go. Uh, that's due to having to reset priorities in the courts because of coronavirus. I expect it will go even further than that. Uh, once they, because the backlog is going to be extreme. Until then, absolutely nothing, whatever, can happen with that. He cannot try to collect it. He's tied up in a straitjacket. And listen to me, Seth Leon, I'm coming for you this time. It's the end of this. All the pain and the grief and the lies and the distortions that you were able to get away with because I couldn't answer you, it's over. 100% over. So that's that. 60% open rate on the LinkedIn first campaign so far. It's still rising. Um, this is going very well. We have three proposals out already. One to India, uh, an Indian gentleman who represents uh, a number of teams. This is the case for all three of these. Um, India, South Korea, and Dubai, three of them. We have two more to go. One is a circle back. And the others, the XFL. XFL is a special case because we want to make a specific presentation for, for the XFL because they're in bankruptcy right now. And we need to tune our presentation to them specifically and see if we can't rescue them out of bankruptcy. So it's going to take more work uh, and it's going to be very specific. And I also think we should take a look at um, AFL again. But XFL is, is the number one. It would be a really, really amazing case for us because they tangled themselves up with gambling right from the start. And if we can pull them out of bankruptcy and restart them with sports investing, that's the best uh, compare contrast story we could possibly have. It's football. It has quite a large, had a quite a large following before it fell apart. It looked like it was going to fall, fall apart before all this happened, but this pretty much killed it almost immediately. Um, I think it's revivable. They don't have any access to the capital markets because now they've failed twice. So, um, yeah, the capital flees when that happens. So uh, we're going to go after them directly. 
And again, the rescue operation, if you, I've said this, it's on the record for, I don't know how long, long time, months, if not more than a year. Number one, um, possible, the top level, most, I mean, the best possible scenario for us is a rescue. Now the whole sports league, uh, the whole sports industry is in need of a rescue. I could not have imagined that was going to happen. I was just hoping to get one of them. Now they're all getting screwed up. Well, in the case of XFL, though, being football, being tangled with gambling, that on top of just the rescue, that's like a super rescue operation because that compare and contrast story is just second to none. So we're going to take a little time on that to, 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 to direct it to the right people in there and to tune that presentation specifically to them. I think that is probably the best. I mean, it is the best possible one. If we can pull it off, that's the best possible one. So again, three three of them out already. This is just a couple days ago. Uh, one circle back, XFL, and I do think AFL needs the same kind of a special attention, but it's it's further down in priority. Stop betting, start investing. So this has a lot more meaning now, not just in terms of sports or gambling, but the broader economy in general. So our financial system is so full of toxic waste, cryptos, derivatives, derivatives on derivatives. I mean, it's just a trash heap. And really what it boils down to is we turn the whole financial system into a casino. So stop betting, start investing. We're going to widen that out to talk about the whole financial system in general. One press inquiry already. Uh, I agreed to. I'm going to get written questions in the next couple weeks. Outpayment requests being requested to be canceled by the traders, not by me. People are changing their minds. They don't want to take the money out of the pilot market. That's new. Uh, Nike, 40% off their whole catalog. I'm not saying that because I have Nike stock. I don't. I don't have stock in anything, including ASM. Um, it is an indicator of the weakness of the broader economy, which I said was cut in half. I actually said that about a month ago. So if Nike is killing off 40% pri the price on their whole catalog, that pretty much validates that because they don't do that. 70% uh, of gig workers have zero income. I This was a shocker for me. I mean, absolute mind blower. Um, the, the the greater part of the economy now is gig workers. So um, the unemployment rate, they're being very dishonest about it. You're going to see pretty soon it's going to be closer to 30%. That's the real number, which is worse than the Great Depression, 30 to 35%. China ASM patent response is filed. Um, I have very high expectations of this. We already have one. Our one and only patent is in China now, the SRI. I do think that that we have a very good chance of getting this and and that would be that's a big thing that's a really big thing uh, negative oil I already said that um, interesting I I discounted zoom as a tool that could be used for personal you know if you if you could hang out with your friends on zoom and it would it would work actually it works pretty good now I'm only bringing that up because I think this again is going to change behaviors and you're going to see more of it you know, and that means less driving around. It doesn't mean you don't go see your friends, but maybe you don't go see them as often, okay? Maybe you do a Zoom uh, party at home instead of getting in your car and, like in L.A., driving two hours to go see somebody. Uh, I, I think, you know, I, I underestimated ha how close to reality or how, I don't know if that's not the right way to put it, how comfortable it is to be, um, you know, hang out with your friends without actually having them there in the room. It works pretty good. So I think you're going to see behavioral changes there that are going to keep transit down and all that and all those effects as well. Um, yeah, Ripen. So we're, we're going to make a deal with Ripen to proceed, continue with the educational side, and also to um, build an, uh, an army of interns for the summertime. I mean, interns are contacting us at, looking for, for opportunities uh, to help us with the order book and and that side because that's you know that's where the need is so two two parts the the continuation of the educational stuff that you've seen in our in our conference calls and then the um, helping us research 
and and respond to research sort and respond to the uh, potential order book uh, candidates. Okay, quick comment on Elam. Um, again, my, my longest friend in the world, about 40 years now, close to it, uh, one of the first employees of SpaceX. Do not misunderstand Elon being drafted into uh, the current whatever committee that uh, Trump has created to reopen the economy that people seem to be surprised they're part of. Uh, this You have to understand SpaceX has national security uh, projects. They, they have military contracts. Don't, don't mistake his participation in that as some sort of an endorsement. It's basically required because of military stuff. And he can't stand Trump. And I know this because my friend works for him. And I mean, they, he gets direct emails. So what you see in the media from two years ago or whatever <laughs> doesn't mean anything. And, and being drafted into this latest whatever hodgepodge is no bearing on that. Uh, Elon has, has no love whatever for, for the current president. Um, we have a $20 trillion mess on our hands. Again, mark this date. I'm telling you this. The problem is this big. We need one year of GDP, one year of GDP and stimulus, and one year of basically highly restricted movement to get this uh, virus under control. I don't know what that exactly looks like, but I'm telling you that's the numbers. Um, about $21 trillion in stimulus and about a year's worth of time. So one year GDP, one year in time uh, to fix it. If that doesn't happen, it's not going to get fixed. It's going to be whack-a-mole. Uh, forever, pretty much, or for a very long time. So, um, and that money needs to get straight into the hands of the people. If you have to drop it out of helicopters or whatever, this bullshit they're doing with these loans and all this stuff, which end up in the hands of the wrong people, uh, end up in the hands of people who don't need it, that's not going to fly. Uh, and that's what's happening. I said that would happen, and it's clearly being reported that is what happened is happening. You need to grant the money to the people, okay? Stop screwing around and paying off your friends and grant the money directly to the people. You need to buy one year. The, cl the closest thing I've seen to reality is this $2,000 a month to every adult citizen for at least six months, renewable for another six months. That's, they're getting close. That's, that's what it's going to take. Anything short of that, and it's not going to happen. The economy is not going to come out of this hole. And you're going to start to see social unrest because people are not going to be able to get food. Vegas has become ground zero for the every, it seems everything. The reopening fights, the mayor can't get along with the governor. Um, it seems to be ground zero. And of course, for us, I mean, if there's, a, if there's going to be an atomic bomb to hit somewhere, that's the where, place to hit it because Vegas is the gambling flagship of the world, right? So it looks like that's ground zero for the fight over the economy. That's ground zero for the fight over, over well, I don't know if it's a fight yet, but it's going to get there between investment and gambling. Our proposition of sports investing versus sports gambling and the greater picture of whether the economy should be reopened or not is in Vegas, 250 miles northeast of here. My LinkedIn traffic is 10 times greater than it was 30, 30 day, days ago, roughly, without any marketing. This is, I, I've not created any more new leads because we need to deal with the ones that we have right now. It's about 800 of them. That's sh kind of shocking to me. It's, it's 10 times, it's normalized at 10 times higher than it was about 30 days ago. And then finally, I sent a, uh, I'm a direct connection to, to Sharon brown Preska, who's a co-inventor of the SRI. You can look that up on your own. She's a, uh, uh, Chief Economist at the State Department. You can look that up on your own. I'm a direct connection to her. If you go poking around my LinkedIn, you'll see that's true. Um, I sent her a message uh, yesterday just to, I don't expect a response. I know she got it, just like the other one, just to put something in her head. I said, because I've said this before in person, I said this to her more than 10 years ago in person when we started building this, that it would be a net win for the economy that if you securitize uh, sports performance, uh, you know, turn that into an asset class, instead of gambling, which is poaching sports performance, you allow people to invest in sports performance, that it will be a big win. Well, that was more than a decade ago. And I said this time, it still stands. And 
I believe with all my heart that if you want something that's going to help pull this economy out, I, I know it's not a, it's not a guess. I know I'm a hundred percent sure that if we put our I mean and and I'm not saying there's not other ways to do it. It's just we that we're the only ones that have proved a model that works. So if you create sports markets, you know, legitimate sports markets, and you allow investment in sports performance, and our model is the only one that's been shown to work, it is going to pull, start pulling the economy out of this dreadful hole. Nothing else you're doing, printing money from the Fed, that, that's failed states do that. That's not going to, and, and, and everybody, any economist worth their salt knows that. That's just because they don't have anything else. But if we price the market in dollars, which it is, and you put it out into the world and you properly control it, it's going to suck in so much capital. People are going to have to buy dollars to trade in it. So it's going to reverse that flow. It's going to put more dollar demand. And it's going to create this whole ecosystem of jobs and prosperity. Folks, that's the reason I'm still here. Okay, If I didn't believe all this would, would be some really big win for the world in general and it wouldn't make people's lives better, I wouldn't have suffered through all this garbage uh, that I've suffered through through to get this here. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't believe that. So I did send her that message. It would be interesting to see. I, I don't think – if I get a response at this point, it's going to be a call to Washington. That's what it will be because there's nothing to say. She knows these things already. I'm just reminding her of things she, I've already said before to her face in person more than once. So that's all. Uh, stay safe with your families. Please, 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 just as one person, human, you know, the human to another, please listen to the science, not to the politics, and keep your family safe. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and I'll speak with you again uh, next weekend. Bye now.